with us. Uh, uh, David Russell from Calix. Calix? Calix? Is that the? Uh, Calix. Calix. And uh, uh, Albert Kangas from Palmer Wireless. And they've also made their move into uh, fiber now at Palmer Wireless. And Paul Solzer from Crawford Network Services. And uh, they're uh, a partnership of the uh, small independent uh, telephone cooperatives in Minnesota that does a great job to help them get economies of scale and efficiencies that help them deliver great services. And then myself. And so uh, before, Don, did you write those questions down yet or are you still thinking about those? Okay, that's fine. Anyone else have any of those questions? Because if you do, then we'll put them up on the wall here and we'll make sure we answer them. But feel free to bring those up at any time. So without that, then I'm going to move forward. So why is broadband so important? And uh, we know that increasingly, whether you're at Farm Fest in Redwood Falls, or whether you're at uh, in Rochester, or any kind of rural community hospital, we know that broadband is important. And uh, whether it's for kids to be able to do their school homework at night, whether it's for people to run their own businesses. In Chisago County, they just completed a community survey, and people in the rural part said, well, if there was broadband, 30% of them said that they would consider starting a home business. You know, for an economic developer, that's some pretty good news that suddenly there's 30% of the population is interested in bringing more money into the county for economic development. So there's a ton of reasons, and we'll hear about those reasons throughout the conference. But my job today is more to talk about what is broadband, and uh, it's a marketing term, so it's not really even, it's no real definition. <laughs> used to be kind of an always-on uh, uh, connection that you didn't have as opposed to dial-up. And now it's really, you know, it's different flavors of broadband. And we have multiple standards we can see. In Minnesota in 2010, State Broadband Task Force recommended and the legislature approved and the governor signed, Tim Valenti, 10 to 20 megabits down and 5 to 10 up. Now we've lost the second half of those numbers a little bit over the last few years, and we've really defaulted to that 10 down and 5 up kind of number, at least some people have. I always like to pull out the 20 and the 10 to think about. But if you look at that, and that stayed the same, the State Broadband Task Force is going to be thinking about what that broadband definition is again this year at their, and their recommendations for the legislature. But now the federal government, before 2008, 200 kilobits per second, that was broadband. Then it went up to 768K. In 2010, four megabits down, one up. And then when they came up with this CAF-2 program, which people will talk about later, uh, they said, well, it's got to be 10 down, one up. And now the FCC, a year later, says 25 down, three up. And it's kind of funny, all this money now going for broadband from the federal government to a standard that we've abandoned, to the 10-1 and not the 25-3. And that's going to be a lot of conversation about that today. If you look at the marketplace, especially uh, Metro Marketplace, using Comcast for an example, in 2005 they doubled their broadband connectivity to uh, 4 meg. And now it's at uh, 150 meg for 2015. And they've announced this uh, 2 gigabit service. Uh, it requires kind of some special equipment, so that's why I've got the asterisk by it. But now gigabit is present in a lot of rural Minnesota places. In the Twin Cities, uh, through uh, Paul Bunyan Telephone, I know Dave's going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, Consolidated Telephone, CenturyLink offers a gigabit service in the uh, metro area. At least four other rural cooperatives with others coming. So this idea of what's the standard, what's good enough, we usually say, you know, at the Blander Foundation, the discussion has been the community is the one that should decide what's good enough for the community. It's not the federal standard, it's not the state standard, it's what's gonna make us economically competitive in our community. This is a map from the uh, uh, Deed Office of Broadband that they use to show which areas are eligible for state broadband funding. And it's all the orange, or salmon, or whatever color that is on the screen today for your eyes. And so all the areas in the green in the greater Minnesota 
or is almost extent, exclusively done by telephone cooperatives. Uh, and uh, there's a little bit here that meets a funny uh, area. It's at least 25 down and three up, but less than 10 down, five up, because they have slow upload speeds. And that's one thing David will talk about in fiber is the ability of fiber to carry signals symmetrically, which is a, 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 for people to send content on the internet is really important. Deed has a lot of great maps on their website. You have, you just have to understand that you need to know something about what's going on in that community or county to really have value in these maps. Because I looked at one, I didn't include in my presentation, but it showed um, 